Hi, and thank you for tuning in. This is the electrician's broom. Welcome back for another video. Uh, today I'm gonna go over the T5 600 electrical tester. This is what I use pretty much every day. Very rarely do I need to use another meter unless we're doing an insulation test, a mega test, but for an everyday tool that covers pretty much everything, I would highly recommend the T5 600. The 600 indicates that it's good for up to 600 volts, anything beyond that, and you would need a 1000. Some of the features that are offered, um, you can turn it off, sick. Um, you can test AC and DC voltage. All you do is turn the dial, and then obviously we're not testing, so we have zero AC currently. If you wanted to test amperage, which is the load on the wire, that's what the jaw is for up at the top. Right now it shows 0.1, there it is, 0 0.0. So obviously nothing being tested currently. And then there's also the ring function. Um, so I'll demonstrate every function in live use to show what you can do with this meter. So like I said, we're gonna be going over the voltage function first, which is indicated right here with the V. Um, as I also said, we can do AC or DC with this meter, but today we're only going to be doing AC. So what you want to do is turn the dial to V. You'll hear the beep. The screen will come on and indicating zero volts, obviously, because we're not testing anything currently. I highly recommend that you use two hands if you're not very um, familiar with this. Safety-wise, you can put both of the probes in with one hand, but I would suggest doing it with two if you're new to testing electricity. You can go ahead and place your meter down, grab both your probes right here, red and black. Testing AC circuits, it does not matter if you use the red or the black on either wire. It does not matter. I can explain that in a later video, but for today's purposes, testing AC power, red and black does not matter. So you're gonna put your one probe into one side, your red probe into the other side, and then with the meter resting on the ground, obviously, if you were testing it at home, you can see the voltage that's indicated on the screen. But for the purpose of the video, I have to show you the screen. So you can see that we have 120 volts being tested from neutral to the hot, which is great. Um, the light is also indicating that there is voltage running through the meter right now. Um, and once you've tested your voltage and everything looks good, another function that I like sometimes, if it's in a tough spot and you can't really see it, you can press the hold button, just tap it, it'll beep, and then when you remove the prongs, it will hold the voltage so you could see it on the screen after you're done testing and you don't have to stay connected to the circuit. So that is the voltage feature, um, obviously extremely useful for doing electrical work. Um, and now we'll move on to the amperage function. One other thing I wanted to share is that also when you are testing, you'll see that where the probes are actually mounted on the tester, they're different. So the reason for that is so that you can actually take one of the probes, slide it in there as a holder. That way, like I said, when you're testing with two hands, which is much safer, you can test like so, and then again, press the hold button or not press the hold button, and then you can remove it, see your voltage, but that holder is very useful, comes in handy a lot. Just wanted to share that as well. So moving on to the amperage function of the meter, what you're gonna do is rotate the dial to the A, and you'll see this little knob right here on the dial is the indicator for what you're selected on. And again, you wanna select the A for the amperage reading. Now testing amperage in this way requires you to be close to live parts. You're going to be placing a live conductor in the jaws of the tester. Electrical work does involve risk. It is dangerous. If you're not comfortable with this, I highly recommend consulting a professional to do the work. If you are gonna do it yourself, proceed with caution, be careful, make sure you wear gloves, take all the, the proper measures to make sure that you are safe. Anyways. So when you're ready to test your amperage, you're gonna take the jaws of the meter, slide them over your hot conductor. Right now you can see that there's 0.1 amps on the circuit already. That's probably residual amperage, not from the load that we're about to turn on. You can see I have a cord plugged into the receptacle right here. That is a fan. 
So I'm gonna turn the fan on, and as soon as I do, you'll see the numbers on the screen change. Not a ton because it's not a huge load, but nonetheless, it will go up. So as you can see, as soon as I turn the fan on, it went up to 0.3 and then dropped back to 0.2. That's because at startup, it takes a little bit more power to start something, but once it's actually running, it's a little bit less amperage. So I'll turn the fan off. We'll go back to our 0.1. I'll turn the fan on again. It'll start up at 0.3 and then drop down to 0.2. And that is how you test amperage with the Fluke 25T5600. Now we'll go over the ringing function. Really quick, I wanted to give you an example of something that has a little bit higher of a draw. Um, 0.3 is still a draw, but it's not very substantial. So I just wanted to give a reference. Um, I'm gonna turn on a toaster, which obviously requires a lot of amperage because it's a resistance heater, so it takes a lot of power. So I'll go ahead and turn the toaster on. And as you can see, that was a big jump all the way up from 0.1 up to 9.4. I'll turn the toaster off. We'll drop back to 0.1, turn the toaster on again. 9.3. So as you can see, that's just a different reference for the kind of loads that you can draw with appliances in your own home. Fan is very low depending on the power of it, but in most cases, very low. And then a toaster, which is a heating element, obviously is going to draw a lot, a lot more. But just to give you a second point of reference, I wanted to try something else as well. Now for the next function, the ring function, you're going to rotate the dial three times, one, two, three, until the knob is over the ohms symbol. This one's fun because you can really annoy people with it. It's typically used to troubleshoot and find out if there's a short circuit. Um, if you're far away from something, you can put the wires together on one end and then test them on the other end to see if you have the right set of wires. There's a lot of different functions that you can use, but today we're basically gonna simulate a short circuit or identify if something is on the same circuit, which can be very helpful at times. I use this well, I try not to use this function a lot because typically if you do the job right, you won't need to, but things happen. Um, and this is a very handy feature. As you can see on the screen, it's indicated OL right now. Now, if we touch the leads together or the probes, got them right here. And it makes a really fun noise. And we have zero with full contact. With shaky contact, you'll get a different resistance number indicated on the screen, but at full ring, you'll get zero. Now it is imperative when using this feature that the circuit, stop it, that the circuit is off. You do not want live voltage when you are testing resistance or ringing out a circuit. Again, you do not want voltage or amperage present when you are testing a circuit for resistance or ringing a circuit out. No power, no voltage. As a safety precaution, when I am ringing out a circuit, I will always put it on the voltage option first. I'll check my circuit to indicate that there is no voltage present because again, safety first. I will test the circuit, in this case, a receptacle. And as you can see on the, on the meter, zero volts, then I'll also test to ground, zero volts, which means that the circuit is off and I'm good to do a resistance test. So now that we've covered all that, we can go ahead and test the resistance. Again, OL on the screen, nothing is being tested currently because my probes do not have contact anything. Contact, annoying. No contact, fine. Contact, annoying. So if you take your probes, and insert them into the inlets for the receptacle, you'll see that it's not ringing, which is good. That means that there's no short. That means that the neutral is not in contact with the hot at any point. If that were the case, that would indicate that there was a short circuit. The breaker would hopefully trip. In most cases it would. So you do not want a circuit to ring out. Now I'm gonna simulate what would happen and what the meter would do if there was in fact a short circuit. All right, so I've inserted a, <laughs> a wire coat hanger because I didn't have anything else and I didn't want to go into the garage. 
So what this is doing is simulating a short circuit. Now, what that means is that the hot is touching the neutral conductor, which again would cause a circuit breaker to trip. Hopefully, that's the whole point. So now if you take your probes, again with your meter on the ohms function indicated right here, you can ring out the circuit and identify that there is in fact a short. Again, you want the circuit to be off when you're testing for this. Get a better angle here. You're gonna place one probe on the neutral side and the other probe on the hot side. And you'll get that ring. Take it off, nothing. Place it again, it'll ring. Now, if you remove the short circuit, place it on the hot side, place it on the neutral side, it will not ring. Indicating that there is no short circuit. But again, if it's touching, it will ring. All right, so that is the different functions on the Fluke T5600 electrical tester. I highly recommend this tester. I use it almost every day. It's very reliable. The only upkeep that you have to do on it is to change the batteries. I do mine every year because I use it a lot and I never want it to fail me. And up until this point, it never has. Um, if you enjoyed the video or learned anything, I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Um, I'm trying to get better with the, the angles, the quality of the videos and the overall production. Um, I am new to this, so please be patient with me. But anyways, thanks for tuning in everybody and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.